Hi, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Royer. This is a video so you can see and hear me, but I cannot see or hear you. You're going to have to stop and talk to your teacher when I ask a question. Pause the video. Okay, so today we're going to reread or read again the book, A Chair for My Mother. And we have some vocabulary words to go over for the chair for my mother. Since we've gone over them before, we're going to go lickety split. The first word is waitress. Waitress is a woman who serves food at a restaurant. Our next word is diner. Diner is a kind of restaurant where the food doesn't cost a lot of money. The next word is change. Change are coins such as pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. Next word is tips. Tips are money you give to people when you're to thank them. Tips are money you give to people to thank them for doing a good job. Next word, spoiled. Good. Spoiled is when something is ruined and you can't use it anymore. Next word, bargain. Good. So a bargain is when something is worth more than the money that you paid for it. Next is a phrase, take a load off my feet. So that phrase means to sit down in a chair and to rest your feet specifically, like when they hurt. Last word, exchanged. Good. So exchanged is when you gave one thing and got another thing back or a trade. It's another word for trade. So in a chair for my mother, you may remember that Rosa, her mother, and her grandmother lost everything in a fire. Their family and friends give them something, some things for their new apartment, but there's still one thing that they really want and don't have. So my first question, and pause the video, is what do Rosa and her family want? I'll wait. Good. And so they wanted a chair, a comfortable chair to sit in. What do Rosa and their family do to get that chair? I'll wait. Okay, we're ready to reread A Chair for My Mother by Vera B. Williams. Remember, this is the Caldecott Medal of Honor, and it's what they give to really, really good books. All right, let's get started. My mother works as a waitress in the Blue Tile Diner. After school, sometimes I go meet her there. Then her boss, Josephine, gives me a job, too. I wash the salt and the peppers, and I fill the ketchups. One time, I peeled all the onions for the onion soup. When I finish, Josephine says, good work, honey, and she pays me. And every time, I put half of my money into the jar. It takes a long time to fill a jar this big. Every day when my mother comes home from work, I take down the jar. My mama empties all of her change from tips out of her purse for me to count. Then we push all the coins into the jar. Sometimes mama is laughing when she comes home from work. Sometimes she's so tired, she falls asleep while I count the money into piles. Some days she has lots of tips. Some days she has only a little. Then she looks worried, but each evening, every single shiny coin goes into the jar. We're going to pause here, and my question is, why do you think Mama looks worried when she doesn't have a lot of tips? Pause and talk about it. I'll wait. Okay, so maybe Mama worries there won't be enough money to buy the chair. Hmm. Let's keep reading. We sit in the kitchen to count the tips. Usually, Grandma sits with us, too. While we count, she likes to hum. Often, she gets money. She has money in her old leather wallet for us. Whenever she gets a good bargain on tomatoes or bananas or something she buys, she puts by the savings and they go into the jar. Grandma must really love her family. She doesn't have a job but she still finds a way to help Rosa and Mama save money to buy the chair. 
When we can't get another single coin into the jar, we're going to take out all the money and go buy a chair. Yes, a chair. A wonderful, beautiful, fat, soft armchair. We're going to get one covered in velvet and roses all over it. We're going to get the best chair in the whole world. That is because our old chairs burned up. There was a big fire in our other house. All of our chairs burned. So did our sofa and everything else. And that wasn't such a long time ago. My mother and I were coming home from buying new shoes. I had new sandals. She had new pumps. We were walking to our house from the bus. We were looking at everyone's tulips. She was saying she really liked red tulips and I was saying I really liked the yellow ones. Then we came to our block. Right outside our house stood two big fire engines. I could see lots of smoke. Tall orange flames came out of the roof. All the neighbors stood in a bunch across the street. Mama grabbed my hand and we ran. My uncle Sandy saw us and ran to us. Mama yelled, where's mother? And I yelled, where's my grandma? My Aunt Ida waved and she shouted, she's here, she's here, she's okay, don't worry. Grandma was all right. Our cat was safe too, though it was a while before we found her. But everything else in our house was spoiled. What was left of the house was turned to charcoal and ashes. We went to stay with my mother's sister, Aunt Ida, and Uncle Sandy, and then we were able to move into the apartment downstairs. We painted the walls yellow, the floors were all shiny, but the rooms were very empty. The first day we moved in, the neighbors brought pizza and cake and ice cream. And then they brought a lot of other things too. The family across the street brought a table and three kitchen chairs. The very old man next door gave us a bed from when his children were little. My other grandpa brought us his beautiful rug. My mother's other sister, Sally, had made us red and white curtains. Mama's boss, Josephine, brought pots and pans, silverware, and dishes. My cousin brought me her own stuffed bear. Everyone clapped when my grandma made a speech. You are all the kindest people, she said, and we thank you very, very much. It's lucky we're young and we can start over. That was last year, but we still have no sofa and no big chairs. When mama comes home, her feet hurt. There's no good place for me to take a load off my feet, she says. When grandma wants to sit back and hum and cut up potatoes, she has to get as comfortable as she can on a hard kitchen chair. So that's how mama brought home the biggest jar she could find at the diner and all the coins started to go into the jar. Now the jar is too heavy for me to lift down. Uncle Sandy gave me a quarter. He had to boost me up so that I could put it in. So I'd like you to pause the video and I'm wondering why did mama bring home the biggest jar she could find. Why didn't she bring a small one? I'll wait. After supper, Mama and Grandma and I stood in front of the jar. Well, I never would have believed it, but I guess it's full, Mama said. My mother brought home little paper wrappers for the nickels and the dimes and the quarters, and I counted them all out and wrapped them all up. On my mother's day off, we took all the coins to the bank. The bank exchanged them for $10 bills. Then we took the bus downtown to shop for our chair. We shopped through four furniture stores. We tried out big chairs and smaller ones, high chairs and low chairs, soft chairs and harder ones. Grandma said she felt like Goldilocks and the three bears trying, to, trying on all the chairs. So pause the video. Why do you think that grandma said that? Why does she feel like Goldilocks and the three bears? I'll wait. Finally, we found the chair we were all dreaming of and the money in the jar was enough to pay for it. We called Aunt Ida and Uncle Sandy. They came right down in their pickup truck to drive the chair home for us because they knew that we couldn't wait for it to be delivered. So question, pause the video 
why do you think mama, Rosa, and grandma can't wait for their chair to be delivered? I'll wait. I tried out our chair in the back of the truck. Mama wouldn't let me sit there while we drove, but they let me sit in it while they carried it to the door. We set the chair right beside the window with the red and white curtains. Grandma and Mama and I all sat in it while Aunt Ida took our picture. Now Grandma sits in it and talks with people going by in the daytime. Mama sits down and watches the news on TV when she comes home from her job. After supper, I sit with her and we can reach right up and turn off the light if I fall asleep in her lap. So I think that having the chair makes the new apartment finally feel like home to mama and grandma. I think it makes Rosa feel good too. One way that Rosa helps her family is by helping at the diner and saving some of the money she makes in a jar. How do you help your family at home? I'm going to say goodbye and you can talk about that question with your teacher. Bye bye.